Greetings, ladies and mandalgens, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one. The Humans Are Coming, written by Runner1. Grandfather sat in the wicker-like chair and covered front porch of his small farmhouse. His slightly yellow-hued skin cast a strange glow in the red-tinted sunlight and the red supergiant that warmed the little known world in the far isolated reaches of the Canic Sea. A small child bearing the same slightly yellow skin played with a yard with a wheeled metal object that seemed to be some sort of toy truck. Tiring of filling and repeatedly dumping out the bed of the truck of dirt, the child stood up from his play area and ran to his grandfather's feet. Grandpa, the child said, what is a human? The older being looked down at the child. After a long moment, he leaned forward and reached down and drew a child up onto his lap. What brought this on? I heard Daddy and Mommy talking last night. They said the humans would be here soon. They sounded scared. Why are Mommy and Daddy scared of them? The older being looked down in the eyes of the grandchild as he gathered his thoughts. The humans, said the older being, are the reason I became a farmer. You became a farmer? questioned the child. Y you are not always a farmer. Oh no, replied the older being. Long before you were born, I had a different job. In fact, it was not even on this planet. I lived far away from here and went to an office every day. The old being paused as though he was trying to remember the details. I was a transcriptionist. What is a trans... trans... Uh, what that word you said, Grandpa? inquired the curious child. A transcriptionist is someone who takes recordings of people and writes them down so that they can read what they said. The child seemed confused. So these humans made you stop being a trans... Uh, that word and became a farmer. No, no, replied the Grandpa. They did not make me become a farmer. I decided that all on my own when I learned about the humans. Why, Grandpa? I don't understand. Are they bad? Is that why Mommy and Daddy are afraid? Well, that is a very long story. Oh, Grandpa, the child's eyes seemed to light up. You tell such good stories. Tell me this one. I don't know. This might one be pretty scary for someone as young as you. I'm not afraid, Grandpa. I'm a big boy now. The older being paused and looked into the eyes of his young descendant. Yes, yes you are, he said, smiling. It all began many years ago, when your father was a little boy. When Daddy was a little boy? Wow, that must have been a very long time ago. The grandfather smiled. Yes, it was. In fact, if I remember correctly, he was even younger than you. Back in those days, we all lived on the Galactic Conference homeworld, and I worked in the capital as a transcriptionist for the conference. You worked for the Galactic Conference? Wow, that must have been a very important job. It was, or at least I thought it was. Everyone knew that the Galactic Conference was the most powerful organization in the galaxy, and anyone who worked in it could be proud of the job that they were doing. But Grandpa, Daddy says that the conference doesn't exist anymore. No, no they don't. Back in those days, no one could conceive of a time when the Galactic Conference would not exist. Everyone knew the Galactic Conference had ruled the galaxy for thousands of years, and everyone believed that that rule would last forever. What happened, Grandpa? The humans happened. Slowly, it seemed as though the older being could see fear beginning to appear on the child's face. No, no, honey, don't worry. Your parents and I won't let anything happen to you, said the Grandpa, softening his voice. Let me start at the beginning. Long ago, the Galactic Conference was formed, and for thousands of years they ruled the galaxy with an iron fist. They prevented wars, and they laid down the laws that govern behavior and trade throughout the galaxy. So the conference was good, the youth replied. No, but they were not bad either. They just were. I don't understand, Grandpa. Well, the conference was so big and so old that no one questioned it. Too many people, it was just the way things were. That is, until the humans came along. Then everything changed. So the humans did not like the conference. No, I guess they didn't. Why, Grandpa? Well, the Galactic Conference made all the rules. They made all the laws and they told every world what to do and how to live. And they made every world pay a tax. 
What is a tax, Grandpa? A tax is when you give money to the government for it to use to run that government. In those days, every planet was ruled by and forced to pay a tax to the Galactic Conference. Some worlds paid more than others, and not every world liked the rules or liked paying tax. But the Galactic Conference was so big and so powerful that no one thought that they had a choice. That's just the way things were. That is until the humans came along. What happened? Well, you see, the human planet is far off in a more isolated area of the galaxy. It was there for millions of years, and no one knew it existed. They were so far out and isolated that they did not even know that anyone else was in the galaxy but them. It wasn't until the ship from the Galactic Conference discovered them and made contact that they knew that there was life outside their planet. They didn't know about the conference, Grandpa. No, they did not. Why, oh, Grandpa, that must have been really far away. Yes, they were. The older being adjusted his position for comfort and continued to speak. You see, when the Galactic Conference ship discovered them, they made contact with the humans and notified them that from then on they would have to obey the Galactic Conference laws and pay a tax to the Galactic Conference. The humans did not seem to like this, but the ship's captain didn't care. It was the law and his job was to enforce it. He promised the humans that he would return with his ship in a year to collect the first tax payment. But when he went back, that didn't happen. What happened, Grandpa? Well, the humans did not believe that Galactic Conference had any right to tell them what to do or tax them. So they attacked the conference ship with missiles and rockets. They killed them? Oh, no. The Galactic Conference ships were too powerful for that. According to the captain of the ship, Humans were weak, and their weapons did no damage to his ship. But, as a punishment for disobedience on the attack, the captain ordered an destruction of one of the human cities. He ordered his crew to blow up the larger human cities. They blew up a city? They killed everyone? Yes, they did. And I know that sounds bad, but the captain didn't see it that way. It was just the way things were done. It was the conference law. It was the way things were always done. You obey conference law and pay your taxes, or you get punished. After he blew up the city, he gave the humans another year to obey the conference law, or he would be forced to blow up two more cities. So did they obey the law, Grandpa? Oh, yes, they did. A year later, when they went back, they were happy, or at least pretended to be happy to obey the law and pay the taxes. But even though they obeyed, the humans had a secret plan. What kind of secret plan, Grandpa? They hid some of their soldiers in their tax payment. They hid soldiers in money. The older man laughed out aloud. <laughs> I'm sorry I did not explain more clearly. Since one world's money is often not worth anything on another world, the Galactic Conference collected taxes in raw materials, steel, iron, aluminium, as well as any more precious metals and raw materials. And for a whole planet, that can be a lot of stuff. The humans hid teams of soldiers amongst the shipment of materials. What did those soldiers do, Grandpa? They took over a ship and turned it around and flew it back to the home planet, Earth. But Grandpa, you once told me the Galactic Conference ships had thousands of crew. They must have taken a lot of soldiers. How were they able to hide that many soldiers? The old being paused for a moment. You would have thought so, but when we found out what had happened, we learned that there was only seventeen human soldiers hidden in the tribute. The youth seemed to be thinking. He then started recounting on his fingers. Well, Grandpa, I have almost that many fingers. The old being chuckled and held up his hands. Almost, you're only short five, he said, smiling. Seventeen, the youth said, against thousands. Pausing again, the young being seemed to be thinking and finally spoke up again. How did they win, Grandpa? How, indeed, he replied the older being, looking off into the distance. So the humans stole the Galactic Conference ship? Yes, they did, and they did what that ship changed everything. What did they do with the ship, Grandpa? Well, they took it apart, they studied it, they learned all they could about the conference technology. You see, before they captured that ship, the humans did not even have faster than light travel. They had been confined to their own star system, but once they had that ship, they had all of its secrets, all of its technology, technology that was thousands of years beyond human technology. They copied it, 
They began building their own ships, and with those ships they attacked the Galactic Conference homeworld. But Grandpa, you once told me the Galactic Conference had thousands of planets, and they would have thousands of ships. How could the humans beat them? That is a question we keep our best minds in the galaxy busy for a long time. I don't understand. Well, when the humans attacked the Galactic Conference homeworld, everyone thought that they had no chance. Surely they would suffer defeat. It would be only a matter of time. But that did not happen. You see, these humans don't think like we do. They don't? No, they don't. Most of the other races in the galaxy are more reasonable. When faced with overwhelming odds of an impossible fight, almost every race in the galaxy will realize their situation and act accordingly, out of self-preservation. You see, for everyone else in the galaxy, it made sense just to accept the conference rules and taxes instead of suffering and penalties. Better than having your cities blown up. That's right, but the humans didn't see it that way. The humans did not believe that the conference had any right to rule or tax them. Not only that, in their mind, the destruction of one of their cities was an unprovoked attack. So the humans fought. Not only did they fight, but they fought in ways that the galaxy had never seen before. In what ways did they fight? The old being looked down at the innocent youth again. War is as old as the galaxy itself. Wars have been fought since before recorded history. But wars have rules, rules that every life form in the galaxy obeys. You see, when war is declared, armies will gather, and they will face each other with honor and dignity. And when they fight, they fight in the light of day. They fight by the rules. And the outcome is always the same. The strongest army will always prevail. The army with the best soldiers and the best equipment will defeat the weaker army. And the victors will make the laws. I understand, Grandpa. Whoever is stronger wins. The old man paused and looked at the pinkish sky. That was the way of the galaxy. That was always the way. There was no way there would be any other outcome. Sensing his grandfather's distress, the child looked up and said, But the humans won. They did not have the biggest army, but they won anyway. How, Grandpa? How could the smaller army win? How, indeed, replied the aging being. How, indeed. Humans were one of the weakest, least technologically advanced races in the galaxy. And yet they managed to overthrow the Galactic Conference almost in the blink of an eye. How did this happen, Grandpa? The humans fought in ways that no one had ever seen before, ways which were inconceivable to the rest of the galaxy. They would hide and ambush ships without warning. They would attack and run. They would sneak in the middle of the night and attack the leaders. No one in the history of the galaxy ever seen anything like it. When the humans were losing, they would fight the hardest, and they would run headfirst into sheer death. If it served to advance their cause, and a cause they had, to them the destruction of one of their cities was not a punishment. It was an attack, and they would not stop until they punished whoever was responsible for that attack. And in their mind, it was not the captain of the Galactic Conference ship, but the Galactic Conference itself. And no punishment short of total destruction of the conference was a punishment enough. So they just kept coming. The conference fought them, destroyed their ships one after another. But it was not enough. It was as though the very being of the planet was devoting every bit of their energy to the effort. Everyone on the planet, Grandpa? Yes, it seemed that way, and for all I know it might have been true. One of the last messages we ever received from the conference homeworld said that there were a mere seven billion of them to fight. Seven billion, Grandpa? What's a billion? A billion is a thousand, thousand, thousand. The youth's eyes seemed to glaze over. It was clear that he was not yet old enough to even begin to comprehend a billion. Grandpa continued, It is such a huge number that you could not count them all in a lifetime. That is a big number. Yes, it is, replied the older being. As the humans continued to attack, their messages coming from the conference world became fewer and farther between. Near the end, every message was the same. The messages said that no matter how many humans died, they just kept coming. They kept fighting. They kept attacking. Again and again. Over and over. Eventually, the messages from the Galactic Conference stopped. 
Some time later, some survivors arrived here and brought the news that the Galactic Conference had fallen. That is why you became a farmer. The old man smiled. No, I became a farmer way before the war started. I don't understand. Remember I told you humans took over the conference ships? Well, before they captured the captain of the ship, he was able to jettison a ship log buoy containing the details of how the humans had taken over the ship. The buoy was eventually recovered and brought to the conference homeworld. As it turned out, I was the person who transcribed the logs that were contained in that buoy. As I was transcribing them, I saw how incredibly small number of humans had overcome a ship of thousands. Well, I knew then, whether or not we could win against the whole galactic conference, these humans were something to fear. It was while I was listening to those logs that I decided I was going to get my wife, your grandmother, and my young son, your daddy, out of the line of fire and as far away as possible. As soon as I finished my job that day, I quit my job, went home and sold everything your grandmother and I owned, and within a few days was on the next colony ship heading for this planet. Well, when we got here, there wasn't much need for a transcriptionist, so I became a farmer. So you ran away to protect Daddy and Grandma? Yes, I did, and looking back, it was the right choice. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Just think, if I had not run away, then perhaps you would never have been born. The youth seemed to be deep in thought for a few moments. I'm glad you ran away, Grandpa. I am too, said the older being, smiling. And it was not too many years after that we left that we received word that the humans had come. And just like that, the conference fell. Now they're coming here. The older being looked down into the eyes of his grandchild. Yes, they are. It has taken them a while since they were so far away. We didn't have to worry about the humans. But now, well, that is all going to change. Just then a sound of a ground vehicle could be heard approaching the dust road. The vehicle lurched and bounced, traveling at far high speed for the rough country road. The vehicle skidded to a stop just meters from the steps of the front porch. Two yellow-skinned beings leapt out and still running vehicle. One was obviously female, the other male. As the cloud of dust swirled around in the afternoon air, the female ran up the steps of the porch and grabbed the young child from the grandfather's lap. As she pulled the child loose, the older being could see tears running down her face. Shortly thereafter, the male stepped through the settling dust. Dad, they're here, he said. We never thought that they would arrive this soon, but a human ship just entered orbit. Everyone is gathering in the settlements to fight the humans, but if the stories and rumors about them are true, I don't see how we have a chance. Just then, there was a thunderclap and a double sonic boom. Looking up, the four yellow-skinned beings could see the large triangular-shaped craft landing dual contrails. Their eyes followed it as it swept across the pinkish sky. Moments later, in the distance behind the craft, several more ships could be seen. They were training streams of plasma fire generated by the tremendous speed through the atmosphere. Moments later, a crescendo of sonic booms shattered the afternoon stillness. Oh my gods, they're here! The female said, now visibly shaking with sobs. End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please consider supporting the author from the link down below. Otherwise, if you wish to support this channel, there are numerous ways to do so, like liking, subscribing, and possibly even becoming a patron. Otherwise, the easiest way would be to share. And until the next video, I hope that you all have a good one, and I'll see you then. Cheers.